Good morning, day 301. We started Colossians today. Look at this though. Wow. Wow. Um, we've got fog settling in over the water and it looks very mystical. Which is kind of cool because that's we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that today the mystery and the power of creation and paul is writing a letter to <coughs> the church in Colossae. i think that's how you pronounce it and so it's called the book is called colossians we have chapter one today and paul is talking about christ is supreme he was it is he is God in visible form, but he has existed before time, before creation. He created everything. But what God did with creation was allow creation to recreate itself and even create new things. And so there's a lot of things in creation that aren't necessarily good for us. Now there's like good and bad. That's how we even understand a word like good because its opposite exists. And so how to kind of live the good life, to live the way that God really, you know, to our fullest potential where we experience the oneness of it all, the mystery with joy, gratitude, love, the power of love, like all of those things that feel good, that make us excited about life, and that also bring good consequences into our life. Fruit, you know, like good fruit and things that we can recreate in our children and the generations to come, that they may also live a good life. And um, wow, look at this. So cool. Um, so there's a lot there. It's like what we want, but of course, then we've got this tension as physical beings live in a limited physical life and our physical being that it is designed and wired and on autopilot to uh, be concerned about the here and the now and survival and all that it takes to survive as a physical, a fragile, physical, limited being. But yet we've got this infinite part of us that is part of the greater, that's more than what we can see and part of the unseen realm. God created, it says, he talked about God created everything through Christ, the rulers, the kingdoms, kings, and the authorities in the unseen realm. There's a lot of mysterious stuff in there. And it says, and Christ came, or God came to reveal the secret. And here's the secret. Christ is in you. Christ is in me. Christ was in Christ. Um, the power of creation. The power to create a life that feels joyful, limitless, abundant, loving and in order to have an abundant life we've got to let go of everything that our physical self our survival self is telling us is what it wants and what it needs not not fully d d d denying what it needs like giving it what it needs nourishing it taking care of it but not thinking that getting all the things, all the acquisitions, all the power, all the approval of fellow men is where the richness and the abundance of life really is and is experienced. When you can let go of that part of our physical humanity and being and go into the mystery and the oneness and the creation and the limitless of our thoughts and our minds because everything created starts with a thought and we can tap into the universal oneness christ 
because Christ is in us and he's in everything and he was before time. Like reading it all and putting it all together, it's like, whoa. But you've got to do it in a right relationship with Christ. You can't just, and this is, this is where we humans get into trouble. It's like, but I want all those things and I want all the money. You know, keep going back to Solomon. Like, I, I can do anything that I want, but is it good for you? Is it beneficial? Hey, good morning. Is it beneficial? No, <laughs> but we can do anything. We have free will. We can, and there are a lot of people that realize they have this power within them and they don't use it for good. And then they don't experience the long lasting abundant fruit of good choices. They, they might for a while. That's why well, oftentimes, you know, we, we humans struggle with the questions of like, why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? Well, I mean, there's just nature in, the, in creation interacting with itself and, and choices, free will choices interacting with each other. God's not a micromanager, but he is delivering messengers and a message that if you live in right relationship with me, with the understanding of the oneness of creation and Christ in you, and you activate all of these fruits of the spirit, even when you maybe experience something bad because of natural disaster, other people's choices, you may suffer but you won't suffer nearly as much. You will actually be able to experience the peace and the joy, even in suffering, with the perspective and the mind of Christ. I know it doesn't, it's like, some of these things, they don't make sense until you start doing them. Like it just seems too weird to the human. It doesn't make logical sense. Um, but we're so much more than what our physical bodies and what our physical eyes can see. We are <clears throat> a bundle of energy that is part of the bigger energy. And when we harness that energy and we focus it with love, with acceptance, non-judgment, we be, we are, we walk the change that we want to see in others. We become, we bring all that energy back to ourselves and become role models, which is what Jesus was. He was a role model. He was a pattern to be followed and walked out. Um, that in Christ, the same Christ that was him and in him and through him is in you and through you. But if you try to crowd and have too many roommates in there and try to live with somebody said, like, I think uh, Paul even talks about dual citizenship at some point, but maybe some of us even try to be citizens of everything, <laughs> like citizens of the wealthy and wanting all the wealth. But if you're doing it just for yourself and not sharing your wealth, and then you're pining after titles for yourself, like it's the ego versus the, um, the higher self and the true self, which is Christ, is our higher mind that we know, we can't quite figure it out, but we kind of know, we have this knowing that there's more for us. And it's evident throughout creation and through the things that humans create. It's in our art, it's in our music, it's in our sculptures, it's in our temples. Like we are all like know that there is something more, <clears throat> more. That is the Christ in us trying to break out and break free and be reconnected to its oneness. Um, that it is already connected to, but with the human, we have free will and the ability to block it or even cloud it, veil it is the words that are used a lot in the Bible. There's the veil and that's what the law does. The law veils the truth 
and Jesus came to free us, unveil, so that we could live correctly. Um, I think it's interesting that in the English language, evil, live, and veil all have the same four letters. Evil is living backwards. Veil is the words all kind of inside out. <laughs> the letters, I mean. I think, do you think that's interesting? I think it's interesting. Anywho, I'm going to leave you with that today. The power of creation. What are you creating in your life? What are you creating for your future generations? Are you creating good patterns of good behavior? We can behave ourselves into a good life, especially when we open ourselves to the truth simultaneously. If we're only trying to behave good and it feels hard and it's rigid and it's of the law, it doesn't produce good fruit. But when you can open yourself up to the truth that Christ is in you and Christ was in is in everyone and you are part of the everyoneness you're going to be kinder to people you're going to love people even when they're knuckleheads or you're at least going to be trying <laughs> um, and that's a good place to start it takes a lot of practice to walk this stuff out um, and understand and that's the only way we begin to understand it is by walking it out doing it faith in faith <sighs> free will is not free and when you try to live in freedom with free will with no limits and only satisfying your human hungers and desires it's chaos but if we can get into God's order of things we will experience what beyond what we can even imagine it's what it says over and over in the Bible and um, look how beautiful this is oh it's beautiful okay rise and shine here we go we're off to the races with Colossians bye